morning, everybody, and can I add uh, my welcome to you all to uh, Manchester this uh, snowy morning. Uh, a city that, if I want to talk about transformation, and I suppose Manchester is a city that has uh, transformed itself over the past couple of decades from what was a dying old industrial city to what is now a vibrant modern uh, city, increasingly knowledge economy based. Um, there are a number of uh, major stepping stones in that process of transformation, the transformation of the heart of the city physically after the uh, 1996 bomb, uh, the transformation that was, uh, came through having the Commonwealth Games here in, in 2002, which not only helped to transform uh, parts of the city, it also transformed the global reputation of uh, UK sport at, the, at that time. And indeed, we wouldn't be talking about the Olympics in 2012 in London if it hadn't been for the success of the Commonwealth Games. Um, it's a, a, a transformation process that is going on. From April the 1st uh, next year, Manchester, along with Tameside and the other uh, eight local authorities in Greater Manchester, will be part of a new local authority, the combined uh, authority, the first of its kind anywhere in the country, and something that we've been lobbying for uh, for a, a decade or more. But again, uh, a sign of a city that is willing to do new things. I'm going to talk about the transformation process that's going on within the City Council uh, it, itself. And it's a, a transformation process that's not only about doing things more efficiently, it's about doing more, it's about doing them better, and of course in the current climate it's about doing all of that for less money. Uh, our route to doing that, uh, fourfold. First of all, it's about investing in our workforce, not divesting of our workforce. It's about redesigning services for greater efficiency. It's about delivering improved outcomes for residents. And as part of that, it's about focusing on our customers. We're currently halfway through a three-year program to transform our services. And this is a program of investing in the future. Uh, at the heart of this is the Town Hall Transformation pro, uh, Program a transformation program that's bringing together technology, people, and systems. Better technology supports better systems to provide better outcomes for residents and staff. But as well as that, wrapped up in the program, is something that brings two uh, much-loved buildings, two uh, listed buildings, back into use in a better way uh, to support new ways of working and giving improved service for residents. Just one example of that, one of the two buildings is the uh, Central Library. Uh, prior to the transformation uh, uh, process, uh, the Central Library had around about 30% front office, 70% of the building hidden from view. Uh, that's going to be reversed uh, post-transformation, and a collection of books and other materials of which only 20% was easily accessible to the public post-transformation, that will become 80% that is easily accessible uh, to the public, a complete turnaround in the accessibility and in a building that will be much more efficiently run at the same time. So what does uh, uh, what we're trying to do include? Well, first of all, get it, get it, get it right first time. Uh, secondly, reduce customer dependency on the council, something Stephen's already referred to. Ensure residents and customers can do more things for themselves through, for example, use of self-service technology, like issuing and returning their own books in, uh, in our libraries, uh, putting more of the council's transactions online, streamlining the way our residents contact us by phone, which involves merging all our call centres into one corporate contact centre uh, with one phone number to call the council. And when people call that phone number, they will get a person, not a, a menu. Uh, we, we will train people so that they can respond to most, uh, most inquiries and get 60% at least of those answered first time. And help, we're also going to help residents engage with central government by making e-government transactions much easier. So whether it's applying for driving license, tax this, etc., online. And uh, where residents want to see someone face to face, we want to make that easier, not, not only with a new city centre customer service centre, but also with a network of neighbourhood customer service centres. 
I suspect in this room you'll all be familiar with the efficiency savings that effective ch channel shift brings. Uh, in, in Manchester at the moment, we have the average cost of a face-to-face -face transaction at something like £26.20, uh, a lot of the same transactions online, uh, 14 to 18p. But it's not as straightforward as that. There are a lot of people in Manchester who are without access to computers at home or work, and that's why we've installed 600 PCs in our libraries, why we are increasing access to school computers for parents, and what, why we've introduced access to council services using DigiTV. We're also looking at designing an iPhone app for Manchester City Council because we know that mobile phone ownership, like digital TV ownership, is much higher here than PC ownership. That's a challenge to recognise that low PC ownership means we need to be more creative in the way we transform our services. So, we embarked, embarked on that whole-scale uh, transformation programme 18 months ago, and every part of the City Council is involved in this, supported and challenged by a dedicated transformation team of 70 staff. In some cases, the transformation is directorate-led and is looking at ways we can deliver our services in particular areas, adults, children, uh, neighbourhood services, delivering services better and more cheaply. In other cases, we need to work across the authority on cross-cutting initiatives that affect each part of the council, bring a holistic approach to things like how we manage property, telephony, contract management, procurement, rules-based assessment and ICT. This requires us to get smarter about the way we work at our corporate core, tracking savings, developing new policies around people, and merging budgets into critical themes rather than the previous silo-driven allocation of funding. But we also need to ask some fundamental questions about some of our customer-facing services. Does, for example, being able to order a new wheelie bin in a local library enhance the library service or water it down and confuse its purpose. Manchester has a strong uh, track record in co-locating services. If a library is in a health service, does it become something else if we share the staff re resource? We need to ask more questions about how we use our schools as a community resource. What is the relationship with the community and voluntary sector in the city? And we need to test all of these things out in the coming months. So we're challenging the usual way of doing business around here. We're designing corporate centers of, centers of excellence, bringing together the best of what we do in services into a new model where ownership, strategic lead, and delivery is from one place. This will apply to our ICT service, communications, uh, property, and so on. We also expect to do more things with other people and deliver more shared services. In April, we'll open a new back office shared service centre, bringing together human resources, organisational development, finance and payroll functions together into one place. And we're also talking in with other interested partners who may share that function with us further. We're working with colleagues from other local authorities across uh, the Association of Greater Manchester Authorities to develop and deliver a collaborative efficiencies programme looking at ten major programmes of work where we believe we can achieve much better outcomes for residents, more efficiencies, and better service levels by working together. And we're working with public sector partners across the city to see where we can work closer together and deliver some joint arrangements. Again, a practical example there, we're piloting in one particular part of the city centre uh, an, an approach which sees street cleaning services, wardens, parking enforcement officers, working as part of an integrated team with neighbourhood police officers and PCSOs. Just as we're providing more flexible services to residents, we need to encourage staff towards more flexible ways of working. There'll be a move to, to, to more flexible working and mobile working amongst our staff and a greater emphasis on handheld devices, smartphones and collaborative working arrangements. This means the provision of better and more relevant technologies for both our office and field workers and a more flexible attitude towards end-user computing. We're transforming our desktop and updating the software up available to staff via an enterprise agreement signed earlier this year, giving our staff the tools they need to work in more effective ways. A new council-wide state-of-the-art data centre 
is in the midst of its design bill phase that will work hand in hand with a staff restructuring, retraining and consolidation program in transforming our ICT service into a corporate ICT centre of excellence. Plans are afoot to redesign, streamline and modernise the Council's extensive wide area network to transform the support for end user computing and to finalise the rollout of digital telephony across the Council. To drive out corporate efficiencies to make a simultaneously a more agile and lower cost organisation, we're ag examining the potential of cloud computing, uh, technical collab co collaboration with our neighbouring neighboring councils and more, working more closely with strategic partners. However, probably the most significant part of our transformation uh, process is what we are doing with our staff themselves. Uh, we will, like most local authorities, have a smaller workforce in the coming years, but we also intend to have a more highly skilled, a more flexible and, as a consequence, more valuable workforce over the next three years. We achieve through developing the skills of existing staff, greater movement and flexibility of people around the organisation, restricting external recruitment and reductions in overall uh, staff numbers through natural turnover. Uh, in all the talk we've seen in the press about how many redundancies are going to be made uh, across the local authorities across the country, you won't have seen a figure from uh, Manchester because we're not intending to put forward a, a figure and we have a commitment to making sure that we, as far as possible, have no compulsory redundancies. We have a newly integrated human resources and organisational development service and its critical function is to support the implementation of how our staff deliver. We need new and flexible ways of working. We need improved transactions in those areas which service managers have said quality of innovations are most, more critical. Managing sickness absence, redeployment and organisational design. We need active promotion of our growth strategies to reduce worklessness and support for young people, increase support for young people through a variety of initiatives, including the Skills Pledge, currently the Future Jobs Fund, in the future the Work Programme. We need better, more focused workforce planning and stronger analysis of workforce trends. And we need innovative approaches to internal recruitment to enable movement across services and develop our skills and capacity to meet key priorities. This is what we term, rather cornerly, the end people approach. But we've been working with trade unions, with staff groups over the last year to develop a new approach to develop, uh, deployment and development which has that name end people. Key principles have been identified which will underpin the approach to developing existing staff and increasing the opportunities for people to move around the organisation. The principles are, firstly, concentration on developing our existing workforce and external recruitment will be exceptional and only by corporate agreement. Pace. The process has to have people moving around the organisation positively and quickly. Progression paths must be clear from entry-level jobs to senior positions and by recruiting at entry level must help to reduce worklessness, fulfilling our commitment to prioritise employing young people and Manchester residents. We need to be evidence-based, a strong body of intelligence of the skills we have now and the skills we will need from our target operating models. This will enable movements of staff to be planned based on knowledge of where the surpluses and where the shortage of skills are going to be and when they're going to be. We need to create demand for movement through effectively moving people to new roles, creating space for others to move into, and that process of restricting external recruitment, including temporary and interim appointments. We need managers who will deal effectively with poor performance, so that poor performance is addressed at source, not restructured out to another part of the council. It needs to be pull, not push. The purpose of them people will be to enable services to pull in people with the skills needed, needed rather than push away people not required. It needs to be incentive-based 
strategic directors and heads of service are accountable for the delivery of the improvement and efficiencies within their business plans and target operating models. The MPP process will be the primary means by which they can draw in the skills they need and move people within the organisation. All staff are on MPP pathways. A pathway is a way of describing the journey an employee is on, for example, matched to a new role in a new structure, on a supported placement with a view to a permanent move, or on a full-time training program to change career di direction. So M people will not be just about services that are subject to redesign. Staff in parts of the council not currently changing will be able to apply to opt into a pathway uh, on all those models I've just suggested, thus creating more spaces for others to be moved into. The approach has been subject to detailed detail negotiation. Uh, we had a ballot of trade unions uh, uh, last month, and that has led now to a new collective agreement in place, which gives us the flexibility to be able to deliver that particular program. Uh, the approach will be underpinned by a council-wide competency framework based on the council's values and the generic skills and behaviours required by the workforce. The creation of council-wide job families to complement the competency framework through grouping technical and specialist competencies. This will align skills both horizontally and vertically and provi provide development routes and pathways for individuals. And I guess at the core of that is uh, uh, the change that people in the council will no longer be employed by a particular department, a particular section. They become employees of the council as a whole. We'll have a simplified capability procedure to deal with poor performance and facilitate earlier and clearer conclusions. And the adoption of a generic flexibility clause for inclusion in all contracts of employment to support that flexible movement of employees across job roles enable access to a range of employment opportunities. So to close, uh, the interdependencies between technology, staff and systems are clear. Better technology supports more efficient systems to provide better outcomes for residents and staff and a better future for the city. We are, of course, now working in a difficult economic climate and waiting for the next round of announcements from central government that will tell us just how much we will have to spend over the coming years. But we believe now more than ever is the time to transform the way we work in order to invest in the future of our people and in the future of our city. Thank you very much.